Shabbat Shalom, Hag Sameach. This is the, the time of Sinchatein. It's the time of rejoicing. It's the time in which all of us, we dwell in a very provisional uh, housing of huts, of boots. And this is the, this, this festival has so many, many names, you know, uh, uh, that you can find it in the Torah. But uh, what is interesting is also, this, uh, sometimes there are, uh, the sages, they talk about seven or eight days, depending who is talking about. Many people say that it's only seven days, other people say that it's eight days. Uh, people say that uh, Hatsuko is not the last festival, the last festival in Germany has said it. And we have those confusion. But uh, no long time ago, I wrote a little booklet about the festival of Sukkot in comparison with our Messiah Yeshua. Uh, and I spoke there about when he was born and uh, when he came here uh, and uh, why the Shemeni said it, what was so important. And this festival uh, became important because uh, at the eighth day, all the children in Israel and all over the world are Jewish children are circumcised, you know, and this is a Simcha. <coughs> um, there is a, a tradition that says if a child dies without being circumcised, the child, even if the parents are Jews, the child dies as a Gentile, you know? And, uh, and, and this is the, the, the thing, uh, the team that we are Messiah Yeshua. Being born the first day of Sukkot, you know? What is the special day on the eighth day? No, the college has been said it. But that is the day of the Brit Milan. It's the day of the covenant. It's the day of seeing the covenant. You know, also the number eight has a, a wonderful meaning in gematria. Uh, is a, the number eight is like a, the number of the new beginning, beginning something new. Number seven is the perfection, completion of service. Number eight is a new beginning. And it's not interesting that our Messiah Yeshua became a Jew, became part of Israel, and we start a new beginning. Uh, I do not need to apologize to be a Jew and to be a, a follower of Messiah Yeshua. I call him my rabbi. He is really my rabbi, and he is the one that has given me so much. I have learned so much from him, from many, many uh, uh, places, many uh, scriptures, uh, from the from the Torah, from the Tenach, from the Nabiim and the Ketuvim. I have also learned from the uh, the Meshachim Yehudim Ketuvim, the Messianic writings, the Christians or the other religion they call it New Testament. What I, I I implore you to change those terms if you are a, a person who understands the scriptures. This idea of Old Testament and New Testament is, is to me, an insulting and pejorative, to say the least. Because to call the writing, the Holy Writings, Old Testament, and the, and the Messianic writing, New Testament, like with the idea, and, the, and this is the, the, the uh, sometimes the presumption of certain religions, they are better than others, and they have something better than the other. It's newer and it's better. You know, and you're going to see that all these religions that start coming later on, they, they invented the new, or they created the new, their own books, you know, and their own holy writings. You have then Islam, they have the Quran, and then you have other uh, sects in Christianity that they have their own writings and their own books. Well, the truth of the matter is that I have been teaching you from the beginning about that the true revelation of our Creator come from the Torah, when He revealed to His people Israel and Har Sinai, you know, in the mountains of Sinai. And then we opened the, 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 the Torah for the people, and from that moment on, His Word became manifested to all. The, the Jewish people, 
are the witness of that wonderful situation. By the way, there were not only Jews in the sense of Israelis, in the sense that they were descendants of Abraham, but it was a, 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 a conglomerate of people that were uh, Israelis and non-Israelis, you know, Gerim, or foreigners that were part of Israel at the time. That to give you the idea of the universe, universality of the Torah, the Word of God. Now, the understanding is very simple for me, not for everybody. But a higher revelation goes to a lower revelation. And people say to me, why do you consider higher revelation, why do you consider lower revelation? And I say, it's a, a, I mention this term because I try to help people to understand my position. What our Creator revealed to us in Har Sinai is His Word given to us. After that, uh, little by little He used prophets and He used other, other means to reveal Himself. But in the beginning was totally directed to Him through Moshe Rabbeinu, our great prophet and leader, uh, Moses. Then, this is the most important part of the scripture. And there is, to me, there is a very simple way of interpreting scriptures. And I say, everything needs to be measured according to what the Torah teaches. You know? We need to look at, at the Torah, and the Torah is going to be the one that is going to give us the, the rest of uh, interpretation. If there is something after the, the Torah who contradicts or supposedly contradicts the Torah, well, we need to do cred uh, credits, we need to do credibility, we need to give the weight to the Torah, and we need to look at the other parts as something that may be misinterpretation or, or enjoyment. Today, we are celebrating Sukkot, and we are in the, in the uh, whole Hamoet days. We are in the third day of uh, Sukkot, you know, and, and and here, we, we sometimes, we ask ourselves, you know, what, a, what, what, is a, what is happening during these days and how, how God told us how to celebrate? Well, you can go to Leviticus, the book of the Quran, and you can go to Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 16, or you can go here to the book of Ben Bar Numbers, chapter 29, and they're going to give you specifics about how to do it. There are many interpretations, there are many guidance, and there are many traditions. But only to give you an idea, uh, our Messiah Yeshua, interestingly enough, if you look at the Havesora Yohanan, the, the, the good news of uh, John, you know, in the Messianic writings, you're going to see that he is going to be talking about the, that he's celebrating Sukkot, you know, and he's going to celebrate this special festival of the drawing of the water. Now, if you look, if you look in the Torah, doesn't exist that festival. Doesn't exist that. Okay? It's totally Pharisaic, rabbinic. But, uh, but what is interesting, okay, there was something that was tradition, that was created after giving the Torah. But even there, our Messiah Yeshua told us about that when there is a good tradition, when there is something that you can ex uh, take good, and that is to increase our relationship with our Creator, it's good to keep it. And they keep it this festival. And he attended. And he, he himself said, I am the water. You know, I have, bring, I have come to bring you that water that will never make you thirst again. Because what is the interpretation? You need to understand the water in the, in the Sukkot uh, festival and also the relationship with the Torah. See, because sometimes people do not understand all these relationships, you know? For example, Messiah was going to bring us the Torah. The Torah, 
in it signify water. You know? Ma'in chayim, living waters. Waters that they are going to give you life. You know? And, and this is the water. When, when, when you should say, you drink from me, what is he saying? We need to interpret it in the way that he's talking of his people at the time. Not what we have, we have theologized today. But what he's saying in the moment, what he's saying is, I have come here as bringing you back the Torah. If you drink from the Torah, you will never search again, spiritually speaking. But, you know, we can go through the, the different areas. And this is also a way to, to give us a better understanding about who the Messiah is and what the Messiah came to do. You know, interesting that he was not born on Pesach or Passover, as many other religions try to make him. And he has exalted Pesach over all other festivals. And, you know, in, in, in Judaism, in, in biblical Judaism, First of all, there is no one festival better than the other because all the festivals are considered Shabbat. You know? Now, tradition makes uh, degrees of which is better, which is, uh, which is no better than the other. But even in that way, the Torah, for example, teaches that there are three, three festivals that are very important. You call it Shalom Regalim, you know? Or the three festivals of pilgrims. And these are Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. It's not interesting that it's not included there in the most important, supposedly, what is the, the highest of the highest, that's Yom Kippur or Yom Teruah. But it's included Sukkot, and it's included Pesach, and it's included Shavuot. All of them has a relationship. And the relationship is about to give us a newness and to give us the Torah back to us, you know? And all of them represent that part of the living Torah. Interestingly enough, you know, when I say to you, I wrote this book like about when really Yeshua was born, I was following the Messianic writings, you know? And you understand, you take a little bit of what he said, in the, especially in the in the in the Havesora Matayahu and the Havesora Lukan, where it speaking about the birth of the Messiah, you can get certain ideas and then you can all put it together and get more understanding about timing. For example, they, when they describe about a, a Sahariah the priest who is the father of Yohanan, the immersed. No, the, the, the baptizer, the, uh, the, uh, he, uh, the, the, who is the cousin, the cousin of Yeshua. No? And then we can see about the timing in which was made and um, when he was serving in the temple. And we, we can check which group of the 24 divisions of the uh, priests was serving. And we, more or less, we can calculate exactly the time and, and the birth of Messiah Yeshua and also the birth of Yohanan. All of that give us a very clear understanding that he was born at the time of Sukkot. And for us, you know, we make the approach that he was born in Sukkot at the eighth day is obviously that is Shemeni ascetic, that it is a special festival that even our rabbis are saying do not have a clear understanding about it. But it's the time that in Israel added this festival, what is very interesting. The festival is Sinchat Torah. You know, the Sinchat Torah is the festival of the celebration of the given Torah. Now, if we're logical, you know, if, if somebody said to me, when do you need to celebrate Sinchat Torah? I would say, in Shavuot. Because this is the best time, that's what was giving the Torah to us, you know? But uh, we are special and we are, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, how you ask yourself, why, why the Yom Teruah is called Rosh Hashanah? 
pure tradition. There is nothing in the scripture that they call it Rosh Hashanah. You know, you know, Ritpara uh, is is a uh, is John Teruah, but tradition made it in that way. Now, if you look at in the scripture, very clear, say that the, you are going to cut the beginning of the year on uh, the first month of Nisan. You know, the first day of the first day of Nisan. Sorry. Then, uh, what? What do you believe? And then you have the year of the trees and the year of the animals. And, and you say, how many years? How many new years you have? Right now, for us, are four. No. Tradition is good in the sense that helps you to get closer to God. But when tradition takes you away from God, the tradition name, get away from tradition. That's how I have been teaching. Then we need to constantly search in the scripture, look at, look at what is the scripture says and not what other people say to us. No. There are books and books written about to trying to uh, say this is right and this is wrong, but to go back to the scriptures, and that is the case. Well, Sukkoth is a very special festival. And this, this, this festival is, is a festival that, like I said to you, has many names. Uh, it's sometimes it's called only uh, Hag, or so the festival, that's all the name that he has. Hag Asif. The, the festival in Gatari, you know, uh, also it's called the uh, Hasuko, the, the booth, and also they call it the Tabernacles, and, and, and all, all those names that they have. This festival, interestingly enough, can be considered a festival of Thanksgiving. To me, it's no coincidence that right now here, for example, in Canada, Monday, we are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. In the United States, sometimes the uh, Thanksgiving time falls also during Sukkot. There is a, a tradition or a story, I don't know how to call it, that the pilgrims, the first one that they came to the United States, they had a very hard year, and then in November they, had, they were in the middle of a uh, very bitter um, winter and didn't have anything to eat, you know, and, uh, and the natives brought the, the turkeys, you know, that, that was a typical animal of, of, of the America, and uh, they gave it turkey to eat, and that is the reason that, you know, all the turkeys run away on this time of the year, <coughs> <coughs> including myself sometimes, you know, uh, and, and uh, I am glad I don't like turkey, I don't eat turkey, and that's it, my, me. but anyway, by the way, it's caution. <laughs> uh, but, but they were very well knowledgeable of the scriptures and they knew what was the time. And that time they call it the time of Sukkot, you know? And they knew that there was a time of thanksgiving to God for all that he had given to them during the year. They were still alive and, and they were being provided by the natives to survive. And they, they, they had shelters, they didn't have even houses very well done. And, and all they say that all they put it together and they, they start the time of Thanksgiving to our Creator. They, they knew the scriptures and that's how it started. Well, if you read carefully, on these seven days, they are going to be, in those seven days, they are going to be 70 bulls that are going to be offered, you know? And these 70 bulls, according to our sages, they represent, they represent the 70 nations of all the rest of the world. Interestingly enough, this is a festival, according to our sages, to bring, listen carefully, to bring the Gentiles back to Israel, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let me ask you, sir, this will be coincidence that our rabbi, our Messiah, Yeshua, was born at this time, and it's through him 
that almost the whole Gentile world has been brought back to the scriptures. It's only a little bit of thought, you know, that you 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 put a little bit of a uh, there of a uh, thinking there that how God works in all of this in amazing ways, you know. Another thing that is interesting about this kind of sense giving, you know, this is this uh, our rabbis are in constant. Uh, Debate. Especially there are two rabbis that are debate. One is Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Akiva. You know, Rabbi Eliezer say that really God didn't ask us to do material sukkah or sukkot. That was only a, an interpretation because he, he provided the real sukkah. And how he provided the real sukkah was his cloud during the day and the, the light during the night. Right. You know, that was his provision. That was, that was only a totally a, a, a spiritual speaking. Um, the, um, Akiva said no, because he specifically said with these materials and the what, what element we need to use, at the same time he said we need to dwell in it. Um, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi uh, Elias and Rabbi uh, uh, Akiva, both of them are part of the understanding. You know, sometimes is what we want to say is one or the other. One, it is an understanding; it's going to more spirit, uh, an spiritualization. We want to say, and the other becomes more literal. Now, if you become too literal you miss the point. If you become too spiritual, you miss the point. So then you need to have a balance in everything that you do. It needs to be a balance. It needs to be an understanding. It needs to be a balance. Here, what is interesting is this. If you read carefully in the book of Deuteronomy, he says that one of the reasons that Sukkot is going to be made, especially in chapter 8, Deuteronomy. It is in order that we, uh, when we arrive to Erex Israel, to the land of Israel, we are not going to start thinking that we did it on our own. But uh, that constantly we needed to go back to our Creator and to understand that everything that we have depends on Him. And that basically we can naked to this world and we are going to live naked and everything is, he is the one that gives us everything. He gives us the food, he gives us the, 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 the clothing, he gives us uh, the, the shelter. He is the one. And what a booth needs to be built and what precarious, you know, that can be uh, passing through uh, rain and everything else. You, don't, you cannot even close your, your, uh, your roof. No, why? Because in that way, you will become like a, 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 the, the covering is going to be totally transparent. And God, our Creator, blessed be His name, He will see you completely the way that you are, and you will need to go to Him to thank Him for all that He has done for you. No, there are beautiful, beautiful pictures that we can develop from all of this. My interest right now is uh, we built a sukkah this, this year, and you know, on the first day, day of the sukkah, in the evening, when we trying to give the thanks to God, it was raining, you know? Uh, and when you rain, it doesn't matter how much you want to have a... a a, a candle there, believe me, doesn't last too long, you know, and then you, if you want to put your table and you, the, the rain is not the most comfortable way to enjoy a time there. Well, I was reading the different uh, traditions and the different rules and regulations for the sukkah, and according to the rabbis, they say, you are allowed, when that rains too much, not to do 
the blessings are inside the soup. You know? Uh, you read all the rules and regulations about the soup and you say, what do they get all of that? You know? And then, and, and uh, it needs to be of this, it needs to be of that, you cannot put it this, you cannot put it that, you need to have at least three words, and you cannot, this certain height, it is too short, it's not, no, is it too high, it is not good. Boy, you get terrible. And I am sure that who wrote that were asking us. Okay? Because everything is here and everything is there, everything is. You are happy, you are not happy, you sit down, you stay down, you stand up and you don't stand up. Everything is so confusing sometimes because you need to do certain things. They even they tell you what is the size of bread that you need to eat in order to fulfill. You know, I say to myself, something that's so beautiful takes away all the joy. Because you are more confused and more worried about how you do it instead of enjoying that beautiful festival. You know that and Messiah Yeshua came to do exactly that. What is exactly that? He came to bring us back the joy of Torah. <coughs> you know, the the Sinhateinu and the Torah Teinu and all of this uh, uh, putting together is about to have a joy, a joy we are creating. You know, at the end of the year, what happened? You are at the end of the year, if you are a farmer, okay? At the end of the year, the only thing that you do now is to put everything in, in, in under cover. You know, all you produce, all that you have produced, you, you make your own uh, a, the preserves and things like that. And once you put all together, you put it there and you wait until uh, spring comes back, you know. Uh, but uh, in winter, it's very little that you can do outside, taking care of the animals that they are, uh, they are warm and they are being kept. Even the animals who are all the time outside, they keep it inside. Now, what is the, the farmer has to do? Only to, to wait and to be thankful to our creator that he gave him a good year. Then sometimes they say are saying that human beings, we are very specifically, read really again Deuteronomy chapter 8, and they say, you know, we can take credit for everything. I work so hard that I deserve this. You know? Uh, I did it on my own. I didn't need a help from nobody. I worked very hard and I did it. You will be surprised how many people today are like that. Thanksgiving. The time of Sinhate, the time of rejoicing, the time of Sukkot. Is to let us know that we live in precarious uh, dwellings. Even if you think that you live in a fortress, it's totally precarious. Because it can be a cataclysm, and doesn't matter how strong your house, everything goes down. When the earth open it, everything goes inside. If you have a volcano close to you, you know, they say that here in Montreal, we have a, a, a dormant, Dormant or, or sleep volcano, you know. Uh, and, and from time to time, we will have certain earthquakes. The earthquakes is going to tell you, I am still alive, you know, I am here. Um, there are so many things that can happen. Who are you, or who, are, who I am, or who are we, in order to say, I am sure that nothing is going to happen? This is the reason that for we are in support, we remember our Creator for all the good things that He has given to us and for all the things that, that He has brought to us. Our Messiah Yeshua came to tell us the same thing and to let us know that we needed to go back to Him, we needed to trust in Him, 
oh, we need we need to leave all the things that are <coughs> traditions only for the sake of become more religious and to go back to the God of the Torah. <coughs> to God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I know that I am in a campaign that sometimes is not working. And I realize that sometimes it's not working because uh, instead of growing the way that we, I wish to grow, you know, uh, sometimes we have less people than ever. Because people, what people want to hear it is, you are going to be a millionaire, and you are going to be very, very popular, and you are going to have this, and you are going to have that, and you, the, you touch it, and it's going to become gold. You know, <laughs> everything that you happen, and you are going to live forever, and you are going to have eternal life, and you are going to do this, and you know, and you are going to see how these places grow. You know, I was looking, I was looking in different places around the world, and the saddest part it is, sometimes in the most popular countries, I don't want to mention names because then people are going to get upset with me, you know, the, the, these groups that are growing in, in an amazing way are these groups that are offering these people things that are impossible, but they want to believe. You know, they say, if you drink from this glass of water, meanwhile I am drinking this glass of water, you are going to be healed and you are going to be prosperous. And people will drink the water and then they, they throw the money to these people uh, and uh, they, they, they become poor and the, and the people who are giving you a glass of water that don't, they don't even send you the glass of water, what they say, go to your house, get a glass of water and drink the water. And sometimes there are places that the water that you want to drink is worse than, than poison, but they, they drink it. And they offer you so many things. And they, they are talking in the name of God. And there are so many people that believe that. Or those religions that they offered you, the paradise. You know? And I, I was reading a, a, a statement in, a, a, in the Quran where it says that if you, if you die as a martyr, Okay? If you die as a martyr, you are going to live in a paradise. They call it the paradise. And the paradise it is that you are going to be served by maidens. They are so fair and so beautiful and perfect. And you're going to have all the food and all the delicacies that you have never ever had before. When you, you see those things, then you ask yourself why people don't want to believe in that. So, so beautiful to believe in this. But what about, is in the scripture they say, you know, in order to eat, you need to work. Oh, I don't like that one. <laughs> well, Sukkot is the aftermath of that. You work, you eat, you have been blessed. But how can you be blessed? Because the rain, the, 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 the terrain, the produce, everything doesn't depend on you only. Depends on our creator. Depends on the weather. Depends on many things that you cannot control. <laughs> right now, at this moment that I am talking to you, we are going through another epidemic. Okay, it's called the Ebola. And nothing new that you used to be in the 70s has come back again. And now all the European countries are shaking their boots, you know? And even in the United States we had already a problem with one citizen from Liberia who came and died. And then we have in, in, in Spain, we have, they brought two missionaries from, from those areas both of them died and one of the nurses had been contaminated with the Ebola and now even they want to, to bring the government down and they say why do you bring people that are sick and things like that. What is interesting here it is how selfish we become when something is jeopardizing my security, my security, my safety. You know, 
There are more than 4,000 already dead people in Africa. And you know, they need some few dollars in comparison to the waste of the world. And they don't send it. And they are in the United Nations. They are, they are accusing Israel because it's, it's a, it, it, it's a abuser and invader and they, 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 they uh, broke all the human rights. Okay? They are still accusing Israel for the human rights. They have ISIS, ISIL, they have all the people that are killing among each other and nobody say anything and they, nobody wants to ask, you know. But now in Africa, they are having a very bad situation. And what, they, what is the, the reason that they want to take a stop now in Africa? Not because the Africans are valuable. No. I wish that they would say, you know, human people are valuable and human life is important. You know what is the reason that now they are scared? Because they can spread out. today we are selfish to the end, no ends and what you call teachers that we are totally dependent on God Listen, and we are in a very precarious situation let me give you a little jump now from that point of view you see <clears throat> in in Judaism, in the biblical understanding from the Hebrew scriptures, I have told you many times that it's from the individual to the community. What is totally different from the understanding of the Western civilization, the Hellenistic mentality, who is just the opposite, is from the community to the individual. If you look at our systems today, one of the reasons that we don't function too well is because we are using the Western civilization mentality instead to be using the uh, Torah mentality or philosophy. You see, everything begins with the individual. If the individual acts correctly, Everything starts working. It's like a, the pebble that goes to the water and, you know, produce rip, ripples. You know, goes and takes the rest. The individual is part of the community in the sense that individual needs to serve the community. Your existence by yourself is not valuable if you do not have any type of influence, or you don't have any type of help, or, or, or you are part of the community that make it grow. As individual alone, you are nothing. You need community. Those, those ones who are loners, or who are monks, or whatever, they, 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 they go to, to, to the world to, to, uh, to, to, to get rid of, of or the influence of the world, you know, they are, they are freeing from their responsibility. The responsibility is to be part of the world, because we are all one. In Judaism, there are two basic schools, the school of Shammai and the school of Hillel. The school of Shammai is a school that is very limiting. It's only Israel and only for us. The school of Hillel is the opposite. It's, it's a universalistic, universal school. It's from here to the world. Yeshua spoke in that way in the Sermon on the Mountain. Where he said, you are going to put the light on the top of the mountain, but you are going to cover. You know, the light needs to be put in the mountain to everybody see it. The light to illuminate everything. And what is the light that compares with the light? It's the Torah. All of us, that we have a relationship with God our Creator, blessed be His name, 
we are all little lights. Can you imagine if we all get together how much light we can produce? But we have a responsibility. The responsibility is not be holier than thou. The responsibility is not say, I am better than you are. The responsibility is say, I am not as bad as you are. The responsibility is no, you know, I look better than you look, or I have more than you have. More is given to you, more is required from you. That's the idea. <coughs> Supposedly in Israel, they don't need to be poor people. And when they are poor people, this is a blessing. Why is it a blessing to have poor people? Because you had the opportunity to help them and to put them in the place. But that is not the idea. The idea it is that all of us were interdependent. What one does is going to affect the other. Sukkot, that is so special because you need to dwell in huts, in boots that are totally that you can see the skies from where you are. What is the message there? You cannot hide from God. He sees you, whatever you are. And you are totally dependent on Him. And the idea it is, my dependence on Him is because He loves me and He wants the best for me. And uh, I don't need to worry because he's taking care of me. I need to worry about to do what is right before his eyes. If I am doing what is right before his eyes, what do I need to hide? I can be who I am. Yeshua came to say that he had come to bring the Torah back to us to bring us the word of God to us, to give us, again, the essence of who we are as a human being, our relationship we are created. What kind of relationship do you have with God? Do you have time to give thanks to him for all the things that he has done for you? How you take the time to say, thank you, God, for everything? How you have the time to say, you know, maybe I am not going the best way that I can go. Maybe I am going through a very difficult time. But even in spite of how difficult it is, I trust you, oh God. Not only because you are my creator, you are my giver, you are my everything. More and more, I am looking about this holiday about God gave us our Messiah Yeshua at this time. This is the time of Thanksgiving, celebrating. Thank you for you being us as Messiah. And also gave us the hope. And this is the hope that all Meshachim Yehudi is sharing you with us. That our Messiah is coming back to finish the work. You know, it's interesting. More and more I am studying about Messiah in the different writings about our sages and um, prior to the coming of Messiah, many books, it's interesting how much information there is and how this idea grew up. You know, even the, 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 the scholar, the Jewish scholars, they talk about our Messiah um, and the, uh, they call it the myths of Messiah, you know? Um, and, and, and this is very interesting. It is that this idea is growing because the need that we have, very important as human beings, the need that we have, that there is hope for us. And that to understand that life is not only the period of time that we live here on earth. And the Torah has been teaching about that. You know, Yeshua, when he talked to the Sadducees, you know, the, the people in the temple who they were like 
like uh, the, the model Karaites, that they only took uh, the, the Tenach, but they didn't accept the Chevy Alp, they didn't accept the oral Torah. You know? But not only that, but they didn't believe in the resurrection. And Yeshua came back and said to us, God doesn't talk to the people. God is not a God of the people. God is God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What he was telling them? The resurrection. There is a resurrection you can read in Yeshayahu. Talks about specifically about res resurrection. But what is important is because he was bringing us back hope. Without God, there is no hope. There is nothing. Now, you can trust in you. And you can trust in everything that you are. And you can trust in your own uh, capabilities. May I ask you, how long can you live here on the earth? And maybe one day you are going to find the fountain of youth and you are going to live eternally if that is what you think. But you see, no matter, no matter what you do, at the end, you are going to have your days counted. The question is, what after that? This is what our, our Messiah Yeshua brought us back to us. Because our life is not only life for this time, but it's for eternity. And this, to live here, needs to be a time of rejoicing. Why is it a time of rejoicing? Because God is a God of life. And He wants us to be happy. But the problem that we have misunderstood what happiness is, people think that happiness is to get everything that we want. You know, do you want to see something? All these people, that the, the press and the media, put it in the pedestal. Those who are super uh, people that they have a lot of money, they're multimillionaires. Look at it. Try to look at their life and if they are really happy. Because material things don't give you happiness. Happiness comes from within. It's a state of life. At this time of rejoicing, at this time our Messiah came. This is the reason that we are grateful that Messiah came. This is the time in which we are transparent before our Creator. And that we cannot hide ourselves in anything. And we need to face Him. We need to be grateful, but at the same time, we need to see Him. There is a tradition that says that it is finally in Hoshana Rabbah, the, the last day of Sukkot, that is the seventh day. This is the day, uh, like uh, the nay last service in Yom Kippur, the closing of the gate. Definitely, they are closed all the gates. There is no any longer any opportunity for uh, forgiveness. And this is the reason that uh, they call it Hoshana Rabbah. You know? Uh, this is the great day, the great day of salvation. Hoshiana. Hoshiana. The great day of salvation, Hoshana Rabbah. Then, the question here is, is all the gates are closed? Who can open those doors? And the answer is, our creator is always, always, uh, in care of us. He's in charge, no us. He had a last word, no us. It is my prayer at this time that all of us, uh, we understand that we are going to become a new cycle, 
and next week we start with uh, again with Bereshit. And in this new cycle, we need to start learning new things, growing, taking a step forward. Not taking a step backward, but constantly taking a step forward. A step of faith, a step of doing something, getting better, doing certain things that is going to improve our life. No. Uh, let's not look for excuses, but let, let's be positive and let's keep going ahead of us. When you start something, try to finish. When you have a desire for something, try to make it reality with the help not only yourself, but the help of others. When you have something to give, give it freely. Don't, don't try to, to, uh, to stop people from receiving. We, we are in, in a time in that everything has a value. Everything needs to have a cost. Everything needs to, to be paid for. But it's good. It is something that is going to benefit the people. But I remember, like uh, Shimon Kephas, when he was asking to, do, to give it to them certain things, and he said, gold and silver I don't have. But what I have, I'll give you freely. How many things we can give freely? You know, are you ever going to visit somebody in the hospital? Have you ever been with somebody who is in need and go to that person? Have you ever listened to somebody who is going through difficulties? Only to be an ear. There are so many things that we can do to give. Many sometimes, many times, sometimes, we say that we don't have the time. And it's not that we don't have the time. It is that we don't want to do it. 